Welcome to Synced On Air. I'm your host, Angelique Robb. And today I have with me, I have Shiloh and Austin, both from Zevbit. Did I say that right, guys? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, I thought we'd get started with hearing a little bit about each of you, what you've done in the industry, how you got started in the industry, and then we can fast forward to your cool new software. So let's, uh, who, who wants to start? Shiloh, do you want to start? Let, yeah, I'll start off with it. Uh, my name is Shiloh. I started a landscape hardscaping company about six years ago. I was uh, 13, 14 years old, getting started uh, mowing lawns around our neighborhood. So that's kind of initially how we got into it. Um, we then started to grow and scale our, our business into more landscape projects, doing full backyard remodels, paper patios, concrete, all that kind of stuff. And uh, awesome. yeah, we put up to like 10 to 12 employees. We were going pretty good. And then we we kind of decided that we really wanted to scale it to the next level. So we started bringing on like salespeople, designers, like an office, really kind of scaling up uh, until we had about 40 employees that are kind of max size. So we went through that whole scale of like from a small little, you know, lawn care company up to, you know, pretty large landscape construction uh, type projects. Um, Great. And you're located in Colorado? Colorado. Whereabouts yes. in Colorado? Uh, we're just out of Denver, uh, okay. surrounding Denver. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so how, how many years from, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but <laughs> you know, was that 10 years ago? Was that how, how far? Yeah, so we started initially about six years ago, starting okay. the lawn care side. Yeah. And then uh, it was, we did lawn care kind of small landscape projects for about a year. And then that's when we started transitioning into like more landscape projects only and kind of dropped off the landscape, the, the lawn maintenance side. Okay. Oh, so you don't do the maintenance side anymore? No. Nope. Okay. Why is that? If you don't um, mind me asking. <laughs> it, was, it was just a decision at the beginning. Like at first we got into the lawn care and then we kind of started getting the opportunity of the uh, opportunity of these larger landscaping projects. And yeah. that was just taking all of our time and attention where we couldn't like keep doing the, the lawns we had at the time. And then we just kind of never really got back into it, um, into the lawn side. But I, I do know a lot of companies that are successful with lawn care. So Nothing, it's nothing a different, that. yeah, it's a different model, isn't it? It's a whole yeah. different type of company. So awesome. Okay. And Austin, where are you located? Yeah, I'm out here in uh, Lake Tahoe, but I just got to add to Shiloh's story. My favorite okay. part about Shiloh's childhood and like, him starting his business was him hiring his first employee to drive him from job site to job site because he didn't have a license yet. Uh -huh. You left off. that bit out, Shiloh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, we, we, I started, so I started when I was like 14, 15. And, uh, when I was 15, we started doing like more landscape projects and I, I didn't have my, I had my permit, but I couldn't like drive up by myself at that time. So I ended up hiring a, my like office assistant and she would come with for, to estimate so that we could drive there. Um, and yeah, I, that was like my first time with an office assistant, like having someone in the office, like answering calls and helping manage it. But yeah, we, we got started at a very young point. Um, we, we needed assistance with the driving part. And so, um, you know, what made you go into it for, in the first place? Was it just a kind of a something you could do close by? And Yeah, so it was really just trying to make some extra money on the side. Like uh, as kids just wanted some some cash. And that's why we started <laughs> lawn care. Um, and and then, it, then we started to see the opportunity. Because as we started doing lawn care projects, homeowners would ask us to do mulch or some landscaping and we started getting these little bigger projects and then we got a ten thousand dollar job and we're like damn like we, this could actually be something <laughs> and, and then next thing we know we're doing like a forty fifty thousand dollar project so um yeah it was it was definitely just starting out trying to make some money in the in the lawn care side and then it turned into something way bigger than that yeah and how old are you today i'm uh, about to turn 20 awesome awesome well sounds like you know, hit the ground running and, and didn't look back. So, um, yeah, happy that you're in the industry now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've had a, a long journey since then, a uh, lots of ups and downs and it's been a roller coaster ride, but a lot of really, uh, important lessons that we've learned, good things that we've taken away, um, fundamental, found fundamental business points that were like really important for us, um, to kind of figure out learning our numbers, how to job costs, how to estimate, um, like all these different things that kind of go into building up a company like that. And how were you learning about all the things in the industry? Um, 
you know, did you know other people in the industry? Did you yeah. research um, a lot? Yeah, I connected with a lot of a lot of people in the industry, joined like all the groups I could on Facebook and whatnot, just to get around other landscape business owners and try to soak up as much as I could. We all, I also went to like events and any like sales training I could and whatnot. But yeah, there were there was a lot of uh, other people I kind of consulted with to to try and fast track things. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Austin, do you want to give yeah. us a rundown of your industry experience? Yeah, of course. And I met Shiloh about three years ago. Um, so I believe Shiloh at the time was about like 17 years old. And when I heard his story and like what he created with the software, <laughs> the initial the initial guy that blew, like built this thing, um, I was blown away. Seriously, I was working for one of our other founders. He was running a hardscape company up in Montana. Um, I was born and raised in Northern California, um, where my dad bought a tractor when I was like 11 years old. And I was just doing field mowing and small landscaping projects. But my my main background was in more in agriculture. Um, I went to college, kind of did the college thing and, and realized that there's like, I'm not poo-pooing the whole college deal, but I realized that there's so much money out there to be made in these contracting um, these contracting businesses. So we kind of were uh, on our path. I was working for one of the other founders. We met Shiloh and the rest is history. We saw what he created with the software and we realized how big of an impact it can have, not only on people's individual businesses, but how it can allow them to grow and scale in the proper way, knowing their numbers, being as profitable as pro possible on projects, and inevitably hiring more people, putting more food on more tables and like, that's our big dream here. Our big dream is helping these companies grow and scale in the correct fashion and making sure that they know their numbers throughout the entire time. So the software has been extremely beneficial to, to companies across the U.S. We're working with a few hundred contractors. Um, we're seeing really good results when it comes to not only profitability, but also to um, close rates on projects. We're allowing them to get contracts to clients quicker as well. Um, like if they're not estimating during the job walk and presenting a quote right then and there, we have all of our contractors sending same day contracts every single time. If it doesn't have to go through design. That's training. amazing. So yeah. It, it's been, it's been fantastic. And, and are we, is it okay if we maybe show a little bit of our software on here? Too? Yeah, I mean, go for it. Tyler, would, you, would you like to pull it up or you want me to pull it up? Yeah, definitely. Um, do, we can jump into it now. If you want to go ahead and show Austin, uh, how it works. One, <laughs> one point I wanted to just make on, on the closing rate was, like most landscape contractors, they take, you know, three days to up to, up to like a week on average to send out an estimate. Um, so if you can just that simple thing of like bringing down that time to after you meet the client to actually sending it out to them, if you can send it out the same day or the next day, that yeah. that one change alone can like really help your close rate and just your communication and, and everything going on with the project. So that's, that's one thing that we've tried to strive to do is to create a system that you can estimate accurately, but also quickly so that you don't have to be bogged down for a week trying to send out all these quotes. So Yeah. And and where'd the name Zev bit come from? Uh, it's just a unique name that we thought of, something that, that wasn't already out there. Um, so yeah, we're, it's going to turn into something big. Okay. <laughs> hey, Shiloh, do you want to cover too, just like like why you came up with Zev bit? I mean, yeah. So I, I kind of was really into all like the, the number side to kind of learn about my business. And I, I was trying to figure out the best system to estimate. So when I started out, we were just doing square foot pricing. We were like, okay, we were figuring out what our competition, other companies were charging, let's say $20, $20 a square foot for pavers. We would, we would get all of our numbers together and measure it out and just send our quotes out that way. But it was really kind of guesswork and relying off of what these other companies charge rather than taking our numbers and really figuring out what we need to do to be profitable. So we, yeah. we started out with a square foot price. We didn't know any better um, that we, 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 we weren't super uh, like cash flow positive. There were some jobs that would, we would spend more than we anticipated on and we wouldn't end up making any money on. So eventually we kind of switched our estimating system to use LMN for a while, which is a, another software in the industry as well as synced up, which is another one, which, both those systems are kind of the same way where you can list out all of your material, uh, different materials you're going to need and the labor and stuff, but it's all a very manual calculation. If you need to manually calculate how many tons of base rock you're going to need, how many bags of poly sand, how many hours it's going to take, you have to, you okay. have to know all those numbers and plug them into the system. So we, we started, we saw that and we were like, every estimate we were writing took an hour or two to send out. And we were like, there has to be a better way to do it. <laughs> Like there, we, we have to be able to just plug in the square footage and then everything could be calculated for us. Like how many tons of base, how many tons of sand we have like yeah. a drop down to choose our type of paver, all that stuff. So that's kind of where the idea started. We, we built it into a, a spreadsheet at first and it turned it into like a, an insanely detailed spreadsheet that I spent like months building. <laughs> 
like it had every single service, every calculation. And once that was out, we we started like sharing it with some other companies. They were like, this is, this, I need this. Like, this is insanely valuable for us. So that's when we saw, okay, we need, to, we need to take this spreadsheet and actually turn it into a software that they can have on their phone. They can have anywhere they're going. It's all, there's way more features and functionality that we can add to it. So that's, that's yeah. what this turned into. Austin can show it here. Yeah. Awesome. And how long has it been out for? Uh, we launched it in October. Great. Yeah. Very new. Launched in October. And also too, like we're not knocking contractors that are doing the square foot pricing because I understand spending an hour, two hours doing it the right way, breaking it down to the materials and time that it's going to take. Like you're not getting paid for those hours. If you're getting paid for those hours, great. Yeah, let's sit down, let's do it. But if a, con if a client doesn't go with your quote, what happened to those lost two hours? That's really what we're yeah. trying to change here. And also too, it's like the lost family time. Like a lot of these guys have kids. They have I was going to say, it's always in the evenings, isn't it? Or weekends. 100%, or, 100%. Yeah. And especially too for contractors who are wearing all the hats, right? The guys that are in the field, they're selling the jobs, they're writing the quotes, they're managing these projects. Um, like they're bringing these quotes home. They're having that stack. And yeah, it's a week later. I'm just getting my quote to Mrs. Jones and she doesn't go with me. What happened that last two hours? I wasn't hanging out with my family. I wasn't having dinner with them, et cetera. So that's our yeah. big, big try and like, like flip. Now the other flip too, is going to be, uh, when I show you the software, we're trying to get contractors not to think about their business as selling X amount of patios or X amount of driveways. We're trying to get them to think about it as I'm selling X amount of skilled labor hours on site at somebody's house. So we're breaking everything down to this man hour basis. So I'm excited to show it to you. Uh, oh, what cool. I'll do, would you mind uh, adjusting the security so I can share my oh, screen? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. no, no, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> okay, there we go. Perfect, let's roll. So can you guys see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys like a quick estimate. We can just do an example on like a paper patio. Um, but first things first, I need to type in um, in our search bar for the, the line item. So we have estimate templates for anything outdoor construction, whether it's hardscaping, softscaping, pools, fire pits, um, anything, irrigation, drainage. And we can also custom build templates for any scope and service somebody provides. Uh, yeah. We will be moving into, uh, into other verticals, but for the time being, we're focused on outdoor construction. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's pull in a pavers in-house template. Now, keep in mind, too, we do build all of our templates in-house, labor subbed and fully subbed, depending on your model and how you run your business. But okay. when I expand this template here, you're going to see these element boxes. So I'm just going to have to plug in, let's say, a thousand square feet. And automatically, we have a price. We have any, how many yards of soil we have to excavate X inches deep with a 15% overdig and a 25% fluff factor. How many haul off loads it is with my equipment's capacity. I can sub out the trucking or maybe use an in-house dump truck. It's going to drop it down. We have like the haul off hours, the load time, disposal costs I can plug in, and then we can start working on our base prep. So maybe we're using geotextile fabric. It's going to tell us how many rolls we need uh, with, with our roll size <laughs> here. We have our base preparation method, which this is one of the, my favorite parts about Zebbit. You're, the only limitations here is your imagination. So we can custom tailor Zebbit to any installation method since anybody everybody has a different method of the madness. But let's say we're yeah. going with a layer of base rock and then a, a layer of sand is a bedding layer. We can select what type of base we're using. How, uh, it's automatically calculating how much of each material we need. Maybe it's a driveway. We'll bump it up to eight inches of base. It's calculating how many loads it'll be if we're picking it up, but we can always supply or deliver it. And then we can select what type of paper we're using, the size. It's telling us how many pallets we need. We can plug in things like linear footage of edge restraint. But this right here is the most important part about Zevbit. So where contractors are losing is underestimating the amount of hours that a project takes. The reason being, if their margin on labor is, let's say, 20%, and they underestimate one man hour, it now takes five man hours profitless to recoup that one. So what we do is we break down their production rates, how fast their crews can uh, get these tasks done, uh, down to this task level. So you can see we have about six hours with four guys for excavation and prep, doing our uh, uh, stabilization grid, uh, doing the base prep. But this is going to depend on things like accessibility, right? So what we have is yeah. we have actors up above, but right now we're at good access. If I flip this to bad access, it's adding about $8,000 because now we're using a different production rate, mm. a small one that's going to add more man hours to this project. The same thing goes for things like materials. So right now we're at 128 linear feet of concrete edge restraint. It's going to take about, I don't know, four hours. But if I flip this to plastic, 
it uses a separate production rate as well, dropping it down to about three hours with four guys. So we do give a total amount of hours here. We have total days with X amount of guys. We are um, giving a price per square foot, like a unit price. However, it's not the unit price of, oh, what Joe on the other side of town's charging. So I'm going to drop it down a couple bucks. It's custom to their company details as well as the project details. Now, what we custom tailor this to is each company's material prices, production rates, and their overhead burden. We'll talk about overhead in a second, but you'll be able to see your gross profit margin, all of your different things that you're going to have to spend a penny on in order to execute, whether it's haul off materials, labor. And then my favorite part, it writes the contract for them, saving them a ton of time. <laughs> that is so nice. <laughs> one of the one of the most important parts is this detail breakdown right here, because th this is pretty like what the other softwares have LMN synced up. Uh, is pretty much a table like this, but you have to go in and manually plug in all the details, all the quantities, how many hours. I was going to ask, how many, okay. How many yeah. materials, all that stuff. We we have these element boxes up above that you just fill out and then it automatically calculates everything for you. So it's just a way to, to speed it up a lot faster and, and it doesn't rely off of the uh, owner of the company to make do the estimates. Once people set this system up, they can have anyone do the estimates just as well as they could because it's all all the numbers are in there and they just got to fill it out. And so what you're saying is you're you're already estimating how long it's going to take to do each part of the job and then it can you can still tweak that. Yeah. And you can absolutely. over time and yeah. Yep, if if something on that job is going to take a little bit longer, you want to bump up the amount of days or adjust it, you, everything is fully editable. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can just use these edited values here. Like you can adjust any value in the in the system that we auto calculate. Um, but but the big thing too is like Charlotte said, it's the time savings on this. Like like just having the time savings, the automatic calculations has been such a game changer and standardizing these processes as well. So I, we have people that are startup companies that are using us that have never bid a job before in their life. Uh, we have a couple of remarkable stories. We got our guy Colo, shout out Colo, who um, grabbed our software, had never bid a project before in his life. And he ended up uh, wanting to set up a business where he was subcontracting concrete. He grabbed our software. We were estimating all the materials for him. He was plugging in his subcontractor price. He ended up selling $200,000 worth of work his first month of business. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have stories like that, but we also have $10 million a year companies using us to standardize their processes because of how hard it is to train a new salesman in this industry. They're not able to look at things like mm. Right away, or um, what the excavation is going to be looking like? Is it? Can I get a machine in the backyard? Things like that, where it's going to make a massive difference on the project when it comes to labor hours or how yeah. we have to this project. But training these people can take years. So what we do is we take the owner or the the lead estimators, like their industry experience, their knowledge, their pricing, everything from their head, and we're able to lay it out in these formulas and in these element boxes where anybody can write it. Even even your dog can come on here and just type in a couple of basic concepts. <laughs> Um, but going up here too, we do have some awesome reporting on each project as well. So it takes all the line items because you can have multiple line items on here, paver driveway, paver patio. You have some planting, irrigation, drainage, okay. et cetera. And then it's going to give you a total project price, a total project cost for you to execute. So your actual cost of goods sold and then breakdowns for material, labor, sub costs. Now this expected overhead is something extremely different that we're doing as well. We've spent countless amounts of hours and, and dollars trying to figure out the best overhead recovery method. And what we came up with is doing it on a man hour basis. So what we do is we get all of their overhead expenses for the year. So whether it's truck payments or insurances, anything that's a non-project expense, we total it with our overhead calculators, which we have calculators for all of this. But what we do is we divide by their production capacity. So how many field labor hours them and their team can work on site in 12 months. And we break it down to this hourly rate. And we're able to do this since we're actually able to accurately calculate how many hours the project's going to take. We multiply the amount of man hours by that overhead recovery rate per hour, and it gets us our expected overhead on the project, which allows us to show them what net profits they should be walking away with before they break ground. Mm. Okay. So another, another cool feature too is called client view. Now client view has been uh, actually helping our customers close more deals as well. It gives the uh, the contractor the ability to give the customer, the homeowner or the, uh, the commercial building owner, whoever it is, insight into their pricing. So when I flip this into client view, you're going to see that all of these uh, markups and margins are now going to be hidden. It's going to be just showing the project total and the details about their project, that uh, that detailed breakdown, that table is hidden. Where I can okay, show the quantities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just showing the project details, I can show the customer my screen involve them in the quoting process. Maybe Mrs. Jones can't afford a $41,000 patio. I can drop it down to maybe 700 square feet 
or show her a cost comparison with some stamped and colored concrete and work within her budget. Now, not a lot of contractors can A, give pricing on site. If they are, they're just throwing something at the wall, see if it sticks. Um, but also too, like just giving them insight into why I have to charge this much. This is how long it's going to take. This is why I'm charging you the 36,000. It's been huge for our contractors. And one of the coolest parts too, they press a button, automatically populates a contract. Uh, we have a lot of guys that are offering. Oh, thousand wow. You sign right now, but you have a cover photo, company info, customer info automatically pulled in from our powerful CRM. And then it builds out your line items for you, pulling all those project details in, which all of this is customizable company wide or project by project. You have expandable photos the customer can click on if you email this to them. But as a contract total, payment terms, you can add tax if Uncle Sam needs to get his hand in there. We got payment terms, when they need to be paid, how much needs to be paid. And then we combine a project or a proposal and a contract in one where you can use our Zebit terms that we give to all of our users that are bulletproof, or they can add their own terms in and it's all electronically signable. So I can just type my name, wow. and select the style, or if I'm an estimator under like the boss, the boss can put his signature in the settings and I can drop my boss's signature on every quote. But when I save this, okay. I've been like IP address, date, time zone, timestamp. It's just as legally binding as DocuSign. Customer can sign from my iPad or my phone if I'm estimating on site, or I can email it right on off to the customer and send it right on off. Hmm. So that's that the is step. impressive. Yeah. What do you think? I I'm just thinking about how much time we can save. <laughs> you know, um, so I have a landscape business still in Scotland, and again. I was always the one doing the quotes and, you know, I mean, we, yeah, we try to do things in a week, but when you're running a few jobs and doing quotes in the evenings, you can't, can't get them right, turned around that quickly. So um, the fact that you could get this signed off in person um, and you're even doing the DocuSign, um, you know, right then and there is is fantastic i love how you have the um all the details for us as business owners or estimators and you can overwrite that or you can just keep it as is but then you flip it into the client mode and i think one of the things that we don't always do a good job of is explaining what it takes to build up underneath a patio a driveway retaining walls you know all of those pieces and it you know by by having the job description and you go you're digging out this much this is the volume that you're excavating this is what you're throwing away your your disposal costs you know because because again we're trying to get to a number always so i i realized that i often would forget to talk the client through every part of the process to tell them how much work it is you know laying the paving is is really just the the um finished article you know and it's actually not the structural element you know there's so much more that goes below it or behind it whichever you know whatever you're doing i think um we as an industry could do more to educate clients what what we're actually doing every step of the way so the fact that you have that part of the contract um makes it really visible and and then the clients probably feel like they know what's going on a lot more too so yeah these yeah homeowners have two things they know what they want and they know what their budget is but educating them on these things really allows them to understand your pricing a lot better especially to like like naming out everything in the in the descriptions on the quote has been huge as well like i talk to guys that i sign up that i kind of like ask like hey can i see a uh, example quote of like a quote that you've sent recently and it's basically just, hey, paper patio, here's the price. This is what we're doing. And <laughs> it's so much more like, um, it, it's almost like an educational piece when the customer gets to read through this. Okay, we're excavating this much soil. We have to haul yeah. it off. It really allows them to lay it out in their heads. So they, they know what A, going on in their backyard, and B, why it costs so much. Because our, our scopes yeah. and services are not cheap. And they'll go to Home Depot or Lowe's and go, well, this paving costs this per square meter. Why am I paying this? And, you know, so... I, we, we do, as an industry, need to talk that through with clients. So I think it helps to have, you know, anything automated <laughs> that um, can help us describe it. Now, um, you know, what what we're doing as a, as a company is trying to highlight, you know, better ways of working, um, equipment that helps you do things more efficiently, um, like software that you're, you know, doing, but how do you keep on top of all of the, you know, 
different ways of laying different paving you know do you have um is it different for porcelain paving is it different for natural stone block paving you know what about new products that are coming on the market for building walls how are you keeping on top of all of those things yeah so as far as the software itself we have templates for every single different service so like okay. paver paver patio will be one template porcelain will be separate flagstone travertine and bluestone okay um, concrete are all like they're all different templates that you we can customize and make specific where let's say for pavers it, it's just a base rock option where once you go to bluestone travertine or flagstone then there's an option to pour concrete base underneath it and then mortar it in um, okay so the, the, the templates are all kind of specific to yeah. installation methods or different ways of doing things um also like austin said at the beginning there's labor there's in-house labor sub and fully sub so yeah. some people might uh, do some some stuff in-house and and subcontract out other stuff so we have templates to kind of work for all all different ways and methods of, of doing it i think that is it's it's kind of like you're you're setting everybody up at the start um for success yeah and... so all of our unlike uh, these other companies Elevan, uh synced up again they they make you build all your templates yourself like you have to go and add all, like put in oh for a paver i need this this and this and this and like kind of put in all the details and then and then you can kind of uh have the items kind of in there but with with zebit we actually spent like months building out all of these templates extremely detailed for every service so that when a company comes in they're already there specific to how most of the time how they do things and then if there's like a little customization or something we don't already have we have people that can build those okay so, yeah that's kind of how how that system works Fantastic. is like we have templates for all the different stuff as far as the materials go like if a new type of paper comes out or wall block or even just pricing is updated there's like a whole setting section in the system where you can edit all the pricing and keep okay. up to date with that so that you have all your accurate material prices in there wow and so you've only launched um am I right? Six, seven months ago. Yeah. And what's the feedback feedback been from clients or, or you know, it's been amazing. Uh, nothing but good things for, uh, pretty much. There's, there's a lot of people that are uh, really, you know, loving the program and taking advantage of it, you know, sending multiple quotes a day, um, getting a lot of signed estimates back. So we always, it's always great for us to see like people getting results and getting the signed estimates. Just the other day, someone closed like an $85,000 job and we see them come in every day. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's great to to know the companies who are on are using it and and it's it's helping them a lot. Um, but yeah, it's it's been going great. We have over 120 uh, contractors on the system as of right now, uh, but we have more coming in every day. And so Shiloh, um, are you still running your landscape business? I am. Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is just a evening and weekend part or <laughs> so I, I yeah the landscaping company I, I just work on a little bit here and there when I need it my my brother okay. um, primarily runs it so he's the one kind of managing the crews and okay. doing estimates and whatnot um, but yeah I, I do I'm still involved with that we still have a, a okay yeah. and they're using Zebbit yes yeah <laughs> okay good yeah oh well that it's it's really great to see young entrepreneurs in the business um, making making waves um, and and challenging the the status quo. I think that um, you know I mentioned Austin when we met that maybe um, you guys need to be at our next Sync Live event. Um, so we'll have to yeah talk more about that as we're planning it. But I you know one of the things we want to celebrate is young entrepreneurs doing things their own way and kind of um yeah blazing blazing a new path in our industry and and it, it affects you know the i think you said 120 contractors well you know that's 120 contractors that could have gone out of business or not made ends meet and you know not made a success of being in our industry and we want to encourage more people to be successful in our industry and to come into our industry. So um, yeah, it, it's great that you're you're blazing that path for all these companies to be successful. So thank you for your your contributions. Um, uh, it's also a little bit of a shock factor for these people too. Like when we do our initial onboarding, I hate using this word. I absolutely hate this word, but it's essentially it's a business audit. Like what we're doing is we're like really digging into their numbers, figuring out mm. what 
they need to be charging. And, and sometimes these people have been so far off where they look at it and they're like, oh my God, I've been leaving so much money on the table. Like, yeah, I'm getting jobs. Yeah, my guys are busy. They're paid. I'm getting some uh, some profits out of it. But when they see these numbers, they figure out exactly what they need to be charging per hour. Sometimes it's half of what they, of, of what they should be charging. So, <sighs> so sometimes, uh, sometimes it is a little bit of a shock factor, but moving forward with Zebit, it allows them to just clean up any of that cash left on the table. It allows them to run more smoothly. And so I guess I'm just thinking of um, payroll and all that. I mean, that's covered in your your overhead costs, the the taxes and employer everything taxes. That... We include as a labor burden cost. So we in our we okay. have we have a budget tool calculator. We could show it to you if you if you'd like. But it's basically okay. a, a budget tool where they can plug in how many employees they have, how much they pay per hour. They can plug in things like what percent of pay, what percent of payroll do they pay in workers' comp? Hold. What percent of payroll okay. do they pay in employer taxes? Uh, yeah. How many hours of unbillable time, like shop tasks, unloading, unloading trucks, that kind of stuff? And we'll okay. we'll break that down to include it in their hourly costs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. No, I think it's you know our our industry still has a long way to go in the in maybe the contractual and explaining parts and and profit you know so it looks like you're making things a step change better so um great for anybody, for anybody listening to we have all sorts of free tools as well whether it's our budgeting tools our overhead recovery tools we have job costing systems uh we have free contract terms that we love to give out just to make sure you guys are protected on contracts for things like unforeseen items while excavating or if materials go up from the time of contract signed to the time that you're purchasing the materials uh, uh, yeah. for you guys, you guys don't need to buy the software. We want to help out in any way we can to push your businesses forward and ensure your guys' success. And so how um, can they learn about more? How, who do, who they, who do they contact? Shiloh, Austin, who, where, what? <laughs> we do have a sales team that loves to help out, whether it's showing you guys our software or showing um, like showing you guys demos, but I mean, you guys can reach out to us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, you can also reach out to us on our website, zevbit.com, Z-E-V-B-I-T.com. Uh, you can reach out to any of us. Like call the support line. It's going to call all of our phones. Like our team is <laughs> well connected um, and we're growing by the day. So it, it's going, it's going well. We're excited to help you guys out and uh, yeah, reach out in any facet. Like we're always available. All right. Well, hopefully we can have you guys showcased at our next event. So um, watch like, this is space. Earth? It Where is Earth? in January and um, we're deciding between two locations right now, Atlanta or Fort Lauderdale. But I think the vote is uh, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> well, Lottie, let's go. <laughs> we're in. We're in. <laughs> awesome. Well, Thanks for, for changing the game and, you know, Shiloh, you have a, a great story. Um, I think, you know, it, it's inspiring to hear about, you know, breaking down those age barriers and, um, and not only that, but also, you know, making things easier for other companies. Um, we need more of this and um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And a, a lot has happened through through the whole process. We've learned like a ton through through everything that's happened. Um, we we actually, as we started to grow, like we we had you know, things that we learned with like mismanaging projects, like times we would have to go back mm. uh, and to call backs, like when when we something we made a mistake on something. Um, there was, you know, certain times, all kinds of stuff that would kind of pop up and really cut into your profitability. We also yeah learned a lot of lessons with with kind of growing uh, too fast because we grew from like 10 employees to 40 employees in uh, like about a year and a half um so th from from scaling that fast i just want to like kind of preface that for anyone watching just kind of be just just don't always chase the shiny new trucks and the <laughs> revenue goals and like all that stuff really really focus on your numbers and um make sure you're being profitable and d don't don't get ahead of yourself with all that because we, we got ourselves in the kind of a bad situation. We got like taken advantage of from our office managers and bezeling money from us. Um, and it oh, started getting us into like a cash flow uh, where we had cash flow issues. You know, we were struggling to, uh, you know, keep everything going. So we ended up taking out like high interest loans to, to kind of cover that the cash flow issues. Um, we didn't know we were being embezzled at the time. So we were, we were just like, why are we, why are we struggling so much with the cash flow? Like, why isn't there more profit than we were hoping? 
Uh, and later we found out we were being embezzled, which made made a lot more sense. But at the time we took out these high interest loans that the interest just dug ourselves a deeper hole. And eventually yeah. we were kind of in an option where we had to actually file bankruptcy. So that's that's kind of a whole process we went through after after growing up that large company and learning going through that. And we really took a lot of a lot of lessons away from that. There was uh, an incredible amount of stuff learned um, and we kind of took everything from that and uh, have set, then rebuilt. Uh, but this time, like keeping it small and efficient with like one crew. Okay. So now we run we run four guys, one crew keeping it more focused and efficient compared yeah. to how we were before. Um, and we, we've just taken everything we learned from that and really put it into, into this new company to be as efficient and profitable as possible. Um, but I just kind of wanted to preface that because when you, yeah. when you grow that large and you're going that big and you're just chasing the trucks and the revenue goals, stuff like that can happen. You can get taken advantage of from your office people um, or something else could happen that it's, it, you know, some when you're when you're running a, a project and you have uh, ten or fifteen percent margins on it, one thing goes wrong and you're you're in the hole and, and you're uh, toast. Can, yeah, it can start adding up and then you're missing payroll or whatever happens and and it can kind of really escalate quickly. So uh, I just want everyone to kind of instead of chasing the trucks and more employees, more crews, more growing, just to kind of focus on your numbers. Make sure you're being as profitable as you can with your current setup, and then mm -hmm. and then looking at expanding. That's a really good point. And I think um, we maybe don't talk about our our failures as much because it's, you know, you don't want to, do you? I mean, you and failure leads to success. So it, it actually um, often is a stepping stone to, to more success because you turn it around. Um, sounds like that's what you've been able to do, um, growing yeah. too quickly. And you've... Absolutely learned a lot from it and bigger is not always better it's yeah. more risk <laughs> more yeah. on the line and and uh, if you are doing it just making sure like you have the right people and like the right systems in place and everything kind of really when we learned like incredible amount like i said like going from that smaller stage to that huge company and growing that whole thing we learned like so much about every single aspect of hiring employees hiring salespeople, managers like shops and everything that goes into it um, and now we can, we, we, with the opportunity to kind of do it again, um, we would rather kind of stay on a smaller scale with ha way higher profit margins than having all this uh, amount of the trucks and equipment and all this stuff that's super high overhead and all these things that could go wrong. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll focus on staying with one or two, maybe three crews and, and focusing on a little bit smaller, but really being efficient, profitable, uh, and knowing our numbers, job costs and all our projects, that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. It, it probably helps your turnover too and in staff and you know the smaller everybody knows everybody um and it's not a you know getting new people in all the time is probably uh nicer too so well fantastic well sounds like you have a lot to share with the audience about yeah. um yeah lots of lessons so um everybody you should check out the zev bit software get in touch with them and get a, a demo and try it out. So great. Well, thanks Austin and Shiloh for telling us a little bit about you and how things are going with Zevbit and your launch in the first year. So congratulations. And we look forward to hearing more from you guys. Yeah. We appreciate you having us on and uh, we look forward to discussing further in the future. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Talk to you soon. Bye. That was great.